afternoon everybody. As requested, I am going to do a heat treating demonstration today. I'm going to start with the basics. This is going to be a two or three part video. So this is going to be the first part. Now, heat treating starts the moment that the steel goes into the fire just before forging. Uh, anytime heat is applied to steel, it is considered heat treating. All right? But we want, to con we want controlled heat treating. So what we're going to do is we're going to imagine that we forged the piece of steel, you've got your shape, you've done all your grinding, and now we're going to prepare for hardening. What I'm going to do is something that you can do before you grind, or you can do it after you grind. Preferably after, uh, before you grind, because the normalizing, which is the de-stressing of the steel after the forging, happens when you heat it to non-magnetic or critical temperature. You keep a little magnet on hand and you test the uh, steel on it. As soon as it becomes non-magnetic, you leave it aside and allow it to cool. About five to ten minutes, so that's just uh, black heat is usually sufficient, but the cooler the better and you can do it three times. The reason we do it three times is it's just like backups, you know. We want to make sure that the uh, grain of the steel has been homogenized and uh, it's, uh, there are no more, uh, there's no stress within the grain of the steel. So what I'm going to do now is I've already got a ground blade. I'm going to normalize it once so you can see what it's about. And then I'm going to use a similar process. So I'm going to heat it to critical temperature and then I'm going to quench it, which is the hardening process. Not to be confused with tempering, which is de-stressing after hardening, which will be in the next video. So we're going to point, I'm going to point the camera at the forge here, and I'm going to show you how we heat the, the steel up slowly to critical temperature, and we will then uh, normalize once, and then we will quench it. Okay, so what I've got here is my, my forge is set up with no air, so this is gas only. We don't want oxidization on the blade. Oxidization is what happens when you get too much oxygen or air into the forge mixed with your gas. So I've closed the air almost all the way. So I've got a pure gas chamber now. This will cause a very even and uh, slow heat as, we go, uh, as opposed to high heat when we want to forge to move the steel around. We're not interested in moving steel. We want to control the inside of the steel. So I've got it set at 50 kPa. You can set it even lower want because the slower we rise the temperature the better it is for your steel. Don't allow steel to get too hot and then to cool down. We want to bring the temperature up slowly. Now with a full tank knife like I'm working on here we're going to start by heating the tank. The tank which forms the majority of the steel in the knife, in a full tank knife in this case, uh, will suck up the most amount of heat. So in order to uh, remove that heat sink when we're warming the blade, we want to bring the tang up to critical temperature as well. I'm going to repeat this process on a full tang knife, sorry, a narrow tang knife as well, and uh, we'll go from there. Now, heating the steel can be a very slow and arduous process, but rather heat slow. So what I say is go low and slow. Keep your temperature of the forge at almost exactly what you need it for the temperature that you need. So if you imagine you left your blade in there, it would get to the critical temperature and not much higher. But obviously I don't have a temperature gauge in my forge, so we have to use experience and our eye to determine which is correct. So as a result, I have to stand by the forge as it heats up. Now it's a little bit dark, there's some clouds over, I'm under my, um, my up duck here. So I've got some nice shade, which is exactly what we need for this process. Now you can see it's starting to go cherry red. Now see here that still sticks to the magnet but we're going to go a little higher as soon as it doesn't stick to the magnet I soak it for there you go that's the right temperature but that's not so we want to heat it so I'm going to put it into the forge a little bit so that the part of the steel that I want heated is in the center of the chamber I keep removing it in and out I don't leave it in because we don't want a hot spot we want the we want to, it's like shading with a pencil, we want to move that temperature throughout the steel. Okay, so I've got half of the tank done, which is fine. So I'm going to turn it around. But now I'm going to put it, the blade all the way through so the tip sticks out the other side so we can get this section heated up properly. 
reason I'm not doing any cuts is because you should see exactly how long it should take. When I say cuts, I mean cuts in the video, not cuts on the uh, on the blade. You should see, see now I see there you go, the temperature goes up there again, but it's starting to bleed into the front, which is exactly what we're looking for. Remember, low and slow, this is our keyword, low and slow. Now you can see the temperature is starting to soak into the blade. The tip of the blade is still outside the other end of the forge. You can see it's dark there, it's getting brighter here. Now once you've got it up to critical temperature, we want to try and keep it there for about five minutes. This has already been normalized several times. So in the case of this one, it's not crucial that I do it, that, that I set open for five minutes because it's, that's already done. I'm just gonna put it aside and I'm gonna do the narrow tang knife. And when this one is cool, I'll take it and we'll heat it to critical temperature so that we can harden the blade. This is 52100 steel I'm working with. It does need a slightly higher temperature to quench because of the 1%, round about 1% carbon in it and the approximate 1% chrome in it. So it's not a pure carbon steel, it's an alloy. But a little bit of chrome makes it incredibly hard and incredibly tough. See, it still sticks, even though it's kind of uh, orangey. Well, it's not even orange yet, it's still cherry red. But this is what we're looking for, this low and slow. The thing that you mustn't do is you mustn't allow the blade to get hot and then allow it to cool to critical temperature and then put it aside. If you overheat steel, you cause grain growth. Grain growth makes the steel brittle. Now, you can see the edges heated up, but the spine is still not the correct temperature. We want it all to heat up nice and evenly nice and slowly there we go now we're getting there perfect look at that there you go that's the correct temperature in the shade all right now for the narrow tang i do the same thing you can put the tang in first now in the case of this one i still haven't stamped my logo in so i'm going to heat it i'm going to use its normalizing cycle to stamp the logo in now this one has also been normalized three times, but I'm just showing you so you can see the difference, the temperature reaction difference in the full tang and narrow tang. I should tell a joke while we wait. I can't think of any jokes now that the camera's on me. Look at that nice purple color. Now that's tempering. We don't want to temper, we want to heat it past these blues and the purples. Tempering I do in a temperature controlled oven. Also for the bigger blades that don't fit into my temperature controlled oven, I stick them in the oven in the house. That achieves the same goal. My wife calls it baking knives. So just so you guys can see, when this is at temperature, I'm actually going to show you how I stamp the logo in. So you get a little bonus. It's nothing complicated. You just have to aim straight and don't burn your hands. So we sit quietly. Now, the, like I said, the reason I want you to see it as it happens is you must see that can't rush this process. Don't let your steel get too hot. I'm repeating myself because these are important points. Nice thing about me leaving the uh, other knife on top of the forge, the top of the forge is hot, so it really slow cools it. Very good for the steel. Okay, so the end of my tank is getting to the right temperature. stamp their knives on the left I stamp mine on the right it's just the way I've always done it there's no specific reason for it make sure your stamp is the right way around and give it a whack if you 
you're gonna double stamp, make sure your stamp seats neatly. There you go, nice and neat, look at that. All right, now it's ready for hardening. Okay, so now we're ready to heat treat. When I say heat treat, I mean hard. Okay, so if you look at the blade, you can see the temperature is perfect for the 5200 steel. So, we're gonna put it in and out a few times, and we're gonna move over to the trough, and we're gonna quench. Always make sure the orientation of your tongs. So if I'm pretending I'm gonna quench, tongs need to be in the right position. Going in the tank, we want that to be gone. This wonderful black gunk that I'm using is what they call the goop quench. It's not the best, but for 52100 it works very nicely. The heat is now gone. I remove the knife, turn it upside down, quench the back, pull it out, and then I just leave it there. When you're finished, you come up with something like that. You can see the distinct quench line. Some call it the temper line, but in truth it's actually a quench line. So there's now a hard along the edge and soft along the back. Because we did a partial quench in the back, we do have a slight, it's slightly harder here than it is here. This is a unique thing about forged blades and carbon steels. I've got three hardnesses. Soft, medium soft, sorry, uh, semi-hard and very hard. This will all then be ground clean and tempered. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.